This video covers D3 selections. The structure of this video is as follows. Basic D3 visualization pattern, D3 dot select, D3 dot select all, D3 selections are arrays, CSS3 selectors as selection tools, and the summary. All right, let's get started. Basic D3 visualization pattern. The basic D3 visualization pattern is select, data, enter, append. This selects the elements that you're going to use, attaches data to them, and creates them on the screen. Let's look at some quick examples from the d3js.org website. We open a new tab and we go to the website. We click on the examples link at the top of the page. And we're going to look at four of the examples. The first example we'll look at is the bubble chart. We can scroll down the page and through all the code, we find our select all, then the data, then the enter, and the pen. We go back, we're going to look at a different type of graph. We're going to look at a sunburst graph. Here we scroll down the page to look at the D3 code. Again, we see the select all, data, enter, and the pen pattern. We go back one page. Next, we're going to look at a chloropleth map. We scroll down the page. And again, we see the same pattern, select, data, enter, and append. We go back to the examples page, and next we'll look at our final map. This one is the zoomable map. We scroll down to look at the D3 code. We see our pattern, select all data, enter, and the pen. As you can see, no matter how varied the visualization, the main pattern is select, data, enter, and the pen. This video focuses on the first step, the selection. D3 select. First, let's take a look at the D3.select method. This method selects only the first matching element that lives in the document. We go to our initial HTML file and open it from the text editor. Here we're going to add in some HTML elements to make it easier to see how selections work. First, we're going to add in an unordered list. We'll have three list numbers, one, two, and three. We also add in two paragraphs. These paragraphs have a class of fancy dash paragraph. The second paragraph also has a CSS style in line that colors the font red. Next, we add in two spans. The first one has a CSS inline style that will color the font red. And the second span will have an ID wide dash span. Finally, we add two div elements to our HTML document. They will be nested. There will be an outer div and an inner div. We save this document, and then we reload our HTML document, and we see the new items on there. Next, we open our developer tools. As you can see, as I move the mouse around, it highlights the section of the element that contains that HTML element.
All right, I'm going to make this a little bit wider. Then I'm going to open up the JavaScript console from the bottom. Okay, now that we have the JavaScript console, we're going to play around with the d3.select. First, we're going to select the d3.select body. As you can see, it creates an array that has an array inside that has the body element. So you can see that there are many, many things inside of here. We won't cover those today. Uh, they'll be covered in later videos. We clear the screen. Next, we select the UL element. So you can see it brings back an array inside of an array that has a length of one. Again, showing you that it has many of the same properties. From here on in, I won't show you all the properties. We'll just look at what it returns. Now we select the LI. We see that it's an array of one element. This is because d3.select only returns the first element that it encounters. So even though there's three LIs or three paragraphs, we only get the first one from the top of the page. Next, we select the dot fancy dash paragraph. This means that D3 understands selection of classes. So rather than an HTML element, we can use an HTML class. We can also use the span. We can also use HTML IDs to select elements from the document. We can also use d3.select to select the first div that appears in the document. We can also select the class of that of a div such that we get div.innerdiv. So again, seeing you all the extra information that gets pulled in when, with that selection. Clear the screen. And finally, what happens if we try to select an element that doesn't exist? It returns an array of an array. However, the first element is null. So it's an empty selection. D3.selectAll. Next, let's take a look at the D3.selectAll method. This method selects all matching elements in the document traversal order. Document traversal order means top to bottom. First, we'll look at d3.selectAll the body element. This returns an array of, of an array. This is because there is only one body element in our HTML document. Again, we see that it has all the information attached to the selection. Next, we select all the UL element. Again, an array of one array. Next, we select the select all of the LI elements. Here we see that it's an array of three arrays. Each of these interior arrays is one of the LI elements and the containing HTML information. We clear the screen. Next, we look at the d3.selectAll paragraphs. We see that it's an array of three arrays. So we can see the first paragraph doesn't have a class, and the second two paragraphs have the fancy dash paragraph class. Next, we look at selectAll.fancy dash paragraph. Because there's only two elements that have that class, we see an array of two arrays the paragraph dot fancy dash graph. Next, we select all spans. We see that it's an array of two because we have two spans in, an, in our HTML document. Next, we look at d3.selectAll hash wide span. Here we can see that we selected the specific ID. Next, we look at d3.selectAll div and see that there are two divs, the outer div and the inner div. When we select all the inner div, we only get one because there's only one in the document. Finally, if we do a d3.selectAll for an ID or an element that doesn't exist, we get an array that's the length of zero.
D3 selections are arrays. You may have noticed that the D3 selections have square brackets around them in the console. In JavaScript, square brackets signify the array data structure. Arrays retain their ordering and their data can be accessed through indices. Arrays in JavaScript are zero indexed. That is, the first element has an index of zero. We do a d3.select body and we see that it has square brackets. This is because d3.select and d3.select all return an array of arrays. Each element that is found is put into its own array. We can put our array variable and define it into the JavaScript console. We evaluate it to make sure it looks right. Here we can see that it's an array of two arrays and each interior array has two elements. To get the first array, we can ask for my array index zero. This gives us the first array. We can do my array index zero, index zero. This will give us the one. It gives us the first element of the first array inside the my array. Next, let's do d3.selectBody. This returns an array that holds one array. Because of this, we can get the zero index of that array, and it shows us an array that contains the HTML. If we do the zero element of that array, we just get the HTML that's inside. Let's clear the screen. We can do the d3.select paragraph, and that returns the first paragraph element. So we can look at the interior array and then the interior of that interior array. We clear the screen. Lastly, we'll look at d3.selectAll paragraph. This will return an array of three elements inside, each of which is an array. If we look at the first array, if we look at the interior array, we see that that's an array of three elements. If we get the first element of that array, we see the HTML for the first paragraph element. CSS3 selectors as the selection tool. D3 uses CSS3 selectors as its selection tool. So you can select elements by HTML tags, like div or span, by class, like dot inner div, dot outer div, dot fancy paragraph, by ID, hashtag wide dash span, or by attribute or containment. And lastly, there can also be a union or intersection of the selectors you use. As a special note, some browsers don't yet support CSS3 selectors natively. And for those browsers, you should take a look at the JavaScript library called Sizzle. The summary. In this video, you have learned the basic D3 visualization pattern, D3.select, D3.selectAll, D3 selections are arrays, CSS selectors as the selection tool and the summary.